So currently, um, the main problem regarding this is that we have, really have a clear definition about what's fatigue. So it may be related to a decreased sense of uh, um, uh, energy, uh, mental energy or uh, physical energy. Um, according to, to identify fatigue in clinical studies, we are using scales and the most used scale is actually the fatigue um, severity uh, scale. But there are other ones like the assessment scale also. Um, and sometimes some clinical definitions are used. But probably the best way, uh, if you want to standardize um, the definition, is really to use a clinical scale. Um, and um, the, 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 regarding this, there are very different cutoff points that have been used. But probably the best way is really to use one of those scales. Regarding management, we really don't have very good evidence-based um, uh, evidence. Um, we know there's some clinical trials that have been conducted regarding fatigue. Uh, some of them have evaluated some drugs, like for example, modafinil. But the problem is that uh, these clinical trials have a lot of bias, actually. Some of them are open label, and uh, even um, the educational outcomes uh, really have some problems. So currently, um, there's no uh, treatment that can be recommended, taking into account the evidence that exists. This was also the conclusion of a recent um, Cochrane method analysis that was performed. Um, I, we don't have evidence-based treatments, but there are some things that uh, have been uh, um, advised for, for patients. For example, try to restrain their activity or even uh, in some cases and in other ones, just planning the activity before performing it. And um, uh, I really hope that in the future we'll have better studies that will increase our evidence regarding these uh, advice that we've been giving to, to patients. But you really need to improve the definitions of fatigue, like I said, and really um, conduct uh, adequate uh, um, clinical trials with adequate sample size. So they can really have a statistical power to show uh, if a treatment is actually effective or not for fatigue. The general investigation about fatigue uh, has a, a lot of shortcomings, and that's because we really don't have uh, prospective, well-conducted studies. Most of the studies are small, the sample small, small size and retrospective. So there's really uh, no good evidence regarding uh, what are the, the uh, factors that may trigger it or that may maintain it. Uh, there is some evidence, um, mainly that depression is a good uh, um, uh, predictor in most studies, but there's also some bias because we know that in some studies to assess depression, some skills are used that uh, uh, take into account questions in which fatigue is asked. So we really don't know uh, if uh, we are really assessing depression in those patients or if we are really assessing fatigue. But in most studies currently, uh, depression is the most important predictive factor. Um, there are some uh, triggers that may uh, increase probability of having uh, fatigue, uh, like, for example, um, uh, stroke occasion, a, a patient having a previous cognitive impairment. Uh, but like I said, we really need better studies uh, in order to have uh, better evidence and to be able to uh, act upon these factors to try to prevent fatigue.